The word of God this morning comes from the epistle written by Peter, the first epistle, chapter 3, and um, verses 14 through 16 was lifted up, and I just want to lift up the focal verse for the sermon this morning, coming from verse 15, that says, instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. I promise if you pray for me and with me, I won't be before you long, but I want to preach from the sermon title, Be Ready. Be Ready. To the Lord of heaven, to the Lord of the earth, and to the Lord of under the earth. We come before you now, Heavenly Father, asking that you send your word, that you send your word that is a living word, a word that your people can chew and digest, a word that they can hide within their hearts so they do not sin against thee, a word that brings life, a word that can cut, rebuke, correct, build up, Send thy word, O Holy Spirit, to accomplish what you need it to accomplish. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. For you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus, the risen Savior name, we say amen. Be ready. Well, after Resurrection Sunday, we had an earthquake. Tomorrow we have a solar eclipse. I don't know about you, but it's time to get ready because God is speaking through the earth that he created, amen. I know what the geologist says. I know what the seismologist says. I know what all of them say, but the word of God lets us know that there will be earthquakes, there will be famines, there will be pestilence, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Kingdoms will come and kingdoms will pass away. But the one thing you can be assured of is that Jesus is coming again. So this passage of scripture that we find in First Peter today on last Sunday, if you didn't have a one week memory failure, I preached to you from the word, you must believe. Well, today I'm telling you that our passage of scripture tells us that as believers, we must be ready at all times to be able to explain the hope that we have. Despite people's fear of earthquakes and eclipses and wars and rumors of wars, Christians are to always be ready to explain the hope that we have amidst all the signs and wonders that God is displaying. I hope y'all realize that the atmosphere is speaking, amen, and the one who created the atmosphere is trying to tell us something. Be ready. It's not about get ready. You should have been getting ready all this time. Well, what God is saying is time to be ready. Well, it comes from Peter. I want to tell y'all a little something about Peter. Let me remind you about Peter. Peter is writing these letters during a time of great suffering for Christians. For those who believed in Christ Jesus, they were being persecuted, and some of them were being persecuted unto death. Well, y'all remember Peter. The Peter before the resurrection was a Peter that we encountered that had some anger management issues. It was the Peter who got angry in the Garden of Gethsemane and cut the air off of the soldier coming to arrest Jesus. It was Peter who got a little upset at Jesus when Jesus told him, I have to go, I must die, to the point where Jesus had to rebuke Peter Peter, when Peter said, that's not true, he said, Satan, get thee behind. Y'all remember Peter, the one who had a little impulse control disorder. He gonna jump off the boat to walk on water, but 
but then lose sight of Jesus and almost drown. Y'all remember this, this Peter who was so scared when they were trying to try Jesus for lies that he had to deny three times. I don't know who that brother is. Stop asking me who he is. Y'all remember Peter, right? But then something happened to Peter when the tomb was empty and he encountered the risen Savior. That encounter with the risen Savior transformed Peter into one of the greatest apostles. And then on May 19th, which is Pentecost, y'all, mark that on the calendar, Peter preached his first sermon and saved about 3,000 souls. Amen. You see, the apostle Peter had to be trained and transformed once he encountered the resurrected Christ and he had to be filled with the Holy Spirit and he became one who began to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ and he comes now in a season where everybody is being persecuted and people are running scared and Peter tells them you got to learn how to fight evil with evil. You got to calm down. Imagine Peter, old Peter, telling somebody, you got to calm down. You can't be fighting evil with your own evil. Let's take a step back. I'm telling you, how many of you before this resurrected Christ you became to believe in was acting one way, right? Maybe like Peter, a little impulsive, got some anger issues, amen? A scared of this and scared of that, but once you gave your life as the text said once you give your life to Christ as the Lord of your life there should be a transformation that occur you shouldn't have these anger issues anymore amen you should be slow to wrath and abounding with love right you shouldn't be the person that thinks then acts right you act and then you think about it you should just calm down think about it pray over it and then respond to it right and that is the Peter we have now. And it is no coincidence that Peter is raised up as this great apostle in a season of great persecution of Christians by the Roman Empire. Peter, who would eventually be crucified upside down because of his faith in Jesus Christ. He told them, I am not Jesus, so if you're gonna crucify me, turn me upside down, amen? This is the Peter we encounter in this epistle and what he's basically saying he says look you're gonna suffer and most of us are gonna suffer for doing what is right you ever had people get mad at you because you are trying to do something correct because you are trying to bring peace when there's strife you are trying to have some love when there's tension and hatred you are trying to do what is right and folks are upset but the passage of scripture says, even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry. Don't lose sleep. Don't be afraid. Instead, just worship Christ. Worship Christ as the Lord of your life. And if someone comes, you should be able to tell them and be ready to explain why do you believe. So last week Sunday, I said today is the day you must believe. The question I have for you today that all of us should be able to articulate in some shape, form, and fashion, if somebody was to come up to you, Sister Yolanda, and say, why do you believe in Christ Jesus? That's not the time, well, let me see. Because he God. Well, I know he's God. But why do you believe that he is God? Well, he said it in his word, okay. But why do you believe? Because the reason I believe might be different from the reason you believe, amen? But you should be able to articulate because folks are living in this world. I mean, the billion dollar industry is based on anxiety and depression medication. Billions of dollars. The world is anxious and depressed. And here you come with your happy self, going to church, coming in with worshiping God, laughing, and people go, what's going on? 
You're not living in the same world I'm living in. There's an earthquake shaking, and I'm like, thank you, God, because only God can shake the earth, y'all. So that was just my, I was like, thank you, Lord. Amen. So I'm like, I'm not hitting the deck. I'm praising God because he just let us know. Because I believe last Sunday when Jesus gave up the ghost, there was an earthquake that shook the temple, right? So for all of us who were celebrating on Sunday, I just think he brought the confirmation this week and said, let me just remind you who could shake the very foundation of the earth. Amen. Why do you have this hope? When you, when you got people running scared, why are you sitting up here thanking Jesus? Why do you believe? You have to be ready. But then Peter tells us, first of all, you got to be respectful, right? You got to understand that folks don't believe like we do. You got to understand that folks are running scared and anxious because with the billion dollar anxiety and depression, we're not going to talk about the weed industry now that all of a sudden became legal when they locked up so many brothers and sisters, amen, for now for a billion dollar industry that's sanctified and taxed by the United States government. I'm telling you, these people up in this world will make you lose your mind lose your mind but when they come to you and say why you got to be respectful and you have to do it in a gentle way because i could see some of you like what you mean why because he jesus and i believe in uh-uh you gotta be respectful i believe because of da 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 right and what peter is also saying is when when you, they come for that explanation you don't need to debate or argue about your faith. You don't owe them an explanation to prove. You owe them an explanation to tell them this is why. You, none of you here have to give anybody any argument or debate about why you decided to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. You don't have to engage them in political nonsense. You don't have to put down their faith and their God to build your God up because he's God all by himself. God says you don't need to defend me, but what you need to do is explain your hope in me. There's a difference because when you ask me why I believe, because I'm standing here 56 years later, when you ask me why I believe, because when the back, my back was between the rock and a hard place, the rock delivered, amen? Why do you believe what you believe? Because when the doctor said I had to do X, Y, and Z, God said stop and believe in me, amen? You have to give an explanation for your hope, but you don't have to defend your faith. And then finally, what Peter says is, the best explanations sometimes don't need words. He said, if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Not when they hear, but when they see. And folks are always watching y'all Christians. They always watching us, waiting for the slightest mishap to say, I thought you was a Christian. Oh, don't you go to church every Sunday? What? They will watch. So what is more critical for you to be ready is number one, you have to be ready, not by words only, but by actions. And that is why Peter is telling them before Christ, he didn't look like a believer. He was angry. He was doubtful. He was fearful. He was impulsive. Who am I describing right now? Amen. Amen. He was angry impulsive, fearful, doubtful, before Christ, before the resurrected Christ, amen? But now, 
when he's preaching and teaching, they're seeing a new Peter, someone that's calm, cool, and collected, someone who stands in the power given to him by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel and what he believes about Jesus Christ. Peter converted, Peter's conversion of others wasn't so much about preaching and teaching, but they knew the brother before the resurrected Christ, and now they looking at this new man standing in front of them that does not look anything like the old man. Man because he has become a new creation based on his faith in Jesus Christ. Can somebody look at you after you leave here today and see the new creation or are they seeing the old person that just happened to have on some good clothes? Can they look at you and see that she don't fly off the handle and cuss me out like I used, like she used to. But now she goes, you know what? Let me go pray before I speak. Does he look like the brother that just came with a whole lot of game and, you know, trying to get and manipulate and cut corners? Or is he now the brother that is very calculated and bold and assured in who he is as a child of God and he don't need no game anymore? And I know that was ebonically not literally correct, but you understand what I'm saying. Because before Christ, you had game. After Christ, you got to give up the game and join the race that you're running for to receive your crown of righteousness. So I'm just stopping by here today to tell all of you, you got to be ready to tell somebody about your hope in Jesus Christ. Why do you believe that the blood still has power? Why do you believe that the Holy Spirit is power from on high? Why do you believe that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. Why do you believe that I am, I am, that I am is the only God? And you can't come up here all meek. Acting like you don't know why you believe half. Because now when we go on the street, somebody might just say, well, why you believe in that Jesus Christ? And you can't throw church language at them because I'm saved. What does that mean to a brother on the street trying to make a living that you save? He want his own salvation. You got to be able to say, brother, what you see here now is not who I was. And the God that picked me up and changed my life is the same God. I can tell you that if you submit to him, if you call on his name and declare him as the Lord of your your life you won't look the same like you look today because I'm a living witness a living sacrifice that God can take you from where you were and change you into something you never thought you could be how many of you you know how they used to ask us in school, when you grow up, what do you want to be? How many of you ever answered, I want to be saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost? Right? How many of you, in your wildest imagination, never thought that on April 7th, you'd be in a building worshiping God, that you'd be in a building given unto God, that you'd be in a church given of your gifts and your talents. I don't remember any little kid when I asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Said, I want to be an usher in the house of the Lord. I want to be a worship leader leading the people to the throne of grace. Amen. What he found is not who you are. And that is why you have a hope. Because what you couldn't even conceive, he already ordained. 
What you couldn't even speak out loud, he already prophesied into your existence. What you couldn't think you were capable of doing, he already gave you and equipped you with everything you needed. And that is why when some of you come to me and be like, Pastor, I don't know if I can do that. I say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this hope that you have in this God that you declare can do all things but fail who strengthens you so you can do all things through his name and the power of the Holy Spirit y'all gotta be ready at all time to passionately declare for Christ I live and for Christ I die and I'm gonna be crucified with him because when he was crucified then he rose you see you gotta go through your own crucifixion in order to be resurrected like Christ and you gotta understand that the excuses are no longer valuable. You got to stop making up worldly excuses for why you don't believe. You got to be able, some of the hardest folks to evangelize are some of the folks you in the house laying down in the bed with cooking dinner for because you got to understand that they are looking at your faith. I don't care if you turn on the music every morning and you saturate the atmosphere with gospel music, but as soon as somebody in your house do something, you done turned and transformed into a pre-Christ creature. And then you wonder why they haven't given their life over to Christ. You got to be ready at all all times and in all things to give this hope that you have and the only way you could ever get ready is to be able to know who God is for yourself who is this God that you serve